What do engineers do to improve Class D audio? Diego in Medellin, Colombia, writes to me and he says, Hey Paul, hey Diego. <laughs> I saw that Emotiva, which is a company owned by my buddy uh, uh, Dan, and he says he's, they've released their PA1 monoblocks. It seems to use the same ICE module, the 300 AS1, as your Stellar S300. Okay, I know you've added your gain cell and maybe other adjustments, so I'm wondering what improvements and tweaks result in sound quality differences that may be between the Emotiva and the Stellar or any other uh, company that uses similar uh, modules. So <clears throat> let me explain a little bit what that means. Most of us manufacturers who build audio equipment from the consumer stuff all the way up to the very high end. If we use class D, we typically use somebody else's module and oh, the likely suspects are ICE, which is a spin-off of B&O. So B&O started a long time ago building these things they called ICE modules. The term came from, you know, you always have to have a cutesy marketing thing, right? So an ICE module is, is, is called that, B&O called it that because they, they ran as cool as ICE. Uh, class D, uh, properly done, is 92 to 95 percent efficient. So even for big watts, you don't have much heat that is wasted as opposed to a class AB amplifier which is about 50 percent efficient or a class A amplifier which is even you know well, when a class A amplifier is not playing anything it's at its its highest or its lowest efficiency state a hundred percent of its power is going into heat so you take that, a Class A amplifier, and, and for those of you that don't remember, because we've had a series on this, a, a Class A amplifier, when it's sitting idle, 100%, if it's a 100 watt per channel amplifier, 100 watts of that power is going into the heat sinks. And, and, and because it's 50% efficient, you've got 200 watts going into the heat sink as it's sitting idle. Now, as you start delivering power to your speaker, you're still at about a 50% efficiency rate, but now instead of the Class A uh, current, all of it, the, 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 what's available to go to the speaker is going into heat, into the heat sinks, it's now going into the loudspeaker. So at full tilt boogie, when you have a Class A amplifier, 100 watts is going into the loudspeaker to make noise, 100 watts is lost in that translation to efficiency, so a, a proper Class A amplifier always draws 200 watts from the wall if it's a 100 watt per channel Class A amplifier. It's just when, when that 200 watts is being drawn and the amplifier is idle, then all 200 watts go to heat. When you uh, have music playing and if it's loud, then 100 watts goes into the speaker or however many watts you're using, and the rest is, is into heat. So that's why Class A amplifiers are so dang hot, right? But anyway, we, we digress. A Class D amplifier is running at about, call it 95% efficiency, so only 5% is going into heat. So you have uh, B&O ICE but, and, and ICE they formed a separate company. B&O sold off the, the division and now they're a whole separate company. They run out of Denmark. Um, another great one, uh, Bruno Putzi and his company called Hypex. They make wonderful modules and there's, oh gosh, there's um, four or five other companies and then that make I, uh, uh, Class D modules. And then there are people that make chips and, and so, very, very few companies make fully discrete custom in-house designs because Class D amplifiers, to do them right, are really technically very difficult and a lot of, a lot of work goes into them. So it's easier for us to just buy them off the shelf like Dan does, Dan Lofman. And it comes down then to, well, what do you do with that? Do you just take the module and throw it in a box? put it a pretty box and then uh, add some inputs and an output. That's what most people do. And the ICE amps are, are decent sounding. In our opinion, they are the best modules. 
but they're only a starting point. I don't know what Dan does, and I've never compared it. Dan makes good, good products. I'm not here to debate that. What, the answer to your question is, what do we do? So we do a lot of stuff. We, we add the, the uh, uh, gain cell in, in a, uh, uh, well, it's not really a gain cell because we don't have variable gain in, in front of our amplifier. It's actually called an analog power cell. It's just a fancy term for a front end that goes in front. So in an amplifier, whether it's a class A, class AB, or class D amplifier, most of the sound qualities of that amplifier come from the input stage and the voltage gain stage, just like a preamp. That's, it's not the output buffer that will uh, have the majority of influence on sound quality. It's the input stage, how you interface to other products, and the actual gain stage. So what we do is when we take that ICE module, that becomes basically the output stage. That gain block provides the watts, the power out of there. And then we work on the input stage. And here we add, uh, now we have our own secret recipe. Well, it's not secret. We, we have our own formula, our own recipe, which involves MOSFETs, which involves a, a separate power supply with its own capacitors, and, uh, and, and just lots of stuff that happen in the input and then we, all, we have some gain that then feeds into the amplifier. So from our perspective, if you want to change the sound quality of a Class D amplifier, you do it where it counts most, as in any amplifier, in the input stage and in the gain stage, and secondarily, the power supply, et cetera. So hope that answers your question. Good one. Thanks. Bye.